I have the neck attached to the body and I've also attached the pickups and put in the bridge. Uh, I didn't film this just because I didn't film it. So the next step is to put the pots in, uh, put the jack plate in, and then slot the nuts so that I can put some strings and test out that all the electronics work. Wired it up, plugged it in, did not work. So now I get to figure out how to debug this. Uh, I really don't want to remove all the wires. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is look at my wiring diagram again. Maybe I missed something obvious. And then after that, I guess we'll have to see how this works out. Back again about 15 minutes later, and I think I figured it out. Um, this is one of those things where if you only change one thing at a time, you'll figure it out. Of course, I changed two things at a time, and I think I figured it out. So uh, I don't know for certain which one it is. Um, this uh, wire right here to ground the two pots to each other um, didn't exist, so I put that there. And then I also came and uh, just cleaned up the solder joint um, on the hot side. And, you know, now it seems to be working. And so it's the next morning now. I've gotten all my electronics wiring issues worked out. And somewhat humorously, uh, Crimson Guitars with the uh, Shred Guitar, um, that episode was dedicated to doing the fret work. Uh, that's what I'm doing this morning, so that was a good refresher. And so the first thing I'm going to do uh, is round over the edges of the frets. Um, I've already gone through and done the making the frets flush to the edge here. Now I'm going to go with the file and actually re, um, round off the edges of every single fret to get the sharp edges off and make it more comfortable when you're actually playing uh, the, the guitar. After I do that, I'll end up taping off the fretboard, leveling the frets, and then uh, after the frets are leveled, I'll go through and polish them and do all sorts of, um, you know, last final checks. The first thing I need to do though, is actually make sure the neck is level. Um, in my other video where I talked about um, the truss rod uh, wrench not fitting. Obviously now I know which one I need. Um, it should still be straight from that, uh, but I am gonna check it with my uh, notched ruler and then uh, we'll get started. With the edges of the frets rounded off, now I'm gonna tape off the fretboard um, so that when I go over the frets with a permanent marker and actually do the smoothing, uh, it doesn't put a whole bunch of metal shavings on the actual uh, wood part of the fretboard. I have the fretboard taped off now and I put my black Sharpie on the tops of the frets. The goal here is to take as few passes as possible with my fretting file um, to go over the uh, fretboard so that all the level, all the frets are level to one another. Um, the point about taking as few as passes as possible is we don't want to make the frets any lower than they need to be uh, because the more you take off now, uh, the quicker it'll have to be refretted in the future. I 
I ended up taking significantly more passes than I would have liked. Um, that's indicative of just not having um, accurate enough pressure when I was using the fret hammer. Um, but you know, that's how things go. Towards the end, you would have seen me put down a metal ruler and then start filing just these upper frets. Um, some people like to put a taper uh, at the upper end of the neck, uh, which is what I was doing. The, the ruler here, you know, it would have put a, a bit of an angle um, on the uh, file to, to smooth out these frets. Um, it actually worked out in this case that these were some of the um, lowest frets anyway. And so by putting that taper on, I just made sure um, that I got a flat end uh, at the base of the neck. And so what I'm gonna do now is take a triangle file. Uh, if you think about kind of a rounded over dome and then you go flat across it, now you have a flat area and then it goes down here. And what we wanna do is bring that flat area back to more of a point so that when you press the string on here, there is less, um, less of an area on the fret to give you a more precise uh, intonation. So I use the triangle file to start bringing this back to more of a triangle and then uh, I'll end up using my fret crowning file to smooth out and get that uh, rounded over fret shape. It's hard to show with a camera angle um, what it looks like when you use the fret crowning file. But if you can imagine that the fret is sort of like this, once you're done with the fret crowning file, the line that's at the top of the fret gets much tighter. And so it's almost, you know, what you end up seeing is a small line like this. And what that means is that the, because the fret crowning file ha has a dome shape built into it, when you're going over the top of it, it's rounding this over. And so the, the thin line that's left is now making a, a, a thinner point for the string to rest on. Now the fret dressing file um, necessarily has to be pretty rough because um, you're, you're actually trying to shave away the metal. And so it leaves a lot of scratches um, in the frets. And so now I'm gonna go over and use various grits of sandpaper uh, I got this tool as part of my fret kit. I don't really like it that much. Um, the sandpaper gets jammed up pretty quickly. And so I might think about how I can um, use some 600 grit sandpaper uh, and kind of work through it so I can do maybe, you know, a couple frets at a time going this way across. And then, you know, when I get towards the end, which with more of a polishing step, um, then maybe I'll come back to using this. I started with 400 grit uh, using the same sanding block that I used to finish um, the guitar body. And it actually works on the same principle. Um, 400 grit and you know the much higher grit papers are really f towards uh, smoothing and polishing, not necessarily removing material. And so I lightly held my block on here, did you know maybe three frets at a time as I went up the neck this way. And then I went back and looked for any other scratches um, that might need to be smoothed out and just kind of did almost the triangle motion, um, the edge of the fret, the top of the fret, and then the other edge. And so it's pretty smooth, but uh, dull right now. And so now I'm gonna work my way up through higher grits of sandpaper, um, both using uh, this sanding block technique. And then once I get to the polishing stage, I'll end up using this since um, the kit that I got uh, came with uh, some pretty high grit papers and so I'll, I'll use that.
I went 400, 800, 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 grit uh, on these frets. And they're super smooth at this point. Uh, the dust that was coming off was looking like graphite from a, a pencil. And so I'm, I'm absolutely uh, comfortable with uh, the smoothness of the frets in terms of, of playing. Some people use metal polish and, uh, and or a buffer. Uh, I don't have either of those. So I'm gonna be leaving this with sort of a satin finish on the frets. Uh, but again, from a playability standpoint, it should be just fine. And as uh, playing happens with strings, they'll start to wear away and actually make the frets shinier. So I'm gonna take the tape off here. And then my next step is to string up the bridge and align the strings, make sure everything's okay. And then I'm gonna let the guitar sit for uh, several hours to maybe even an entire day, just cause it's the first time it's been under tension. And then from there, uh, I'll cut my nut slots and that's pretty much it. I'll have a finished guitar. I'm up in my music room now and I'm gonna start putting the strings on. One thing I've chosen for this guitar is to use a shallower top loading roller bridge. And the roller bridge allows you to set the strings um, using these rolling mechanisms. And so if I keep spinning this in different directions, the, uh, the bridge piece will actually move over. And this is really convenient for when you're building uh, a custom guitar like this, because as I've drilled the bridge, you know, I hope I've done it in the exact right spot. But if not, I can move the strings a little to the right or left um, to accommodate uh, having the strings all parallel to one another. And so I'll end up loading all the strings on here, uh, let it sit under tension for a little bit. And then I'll cut my nut slots and then go through, make sure all the strings are aligned the way I want to. And then I'll be off to set the intonation.